What do you got? Pretty nice. Good morning. Thought this morning first thing before Carissa gets here. Well, she'll probably get here and she'll probably help me, but I thought I'd better clean out this pen that just got weaned yesterday. They're still loud, but not near as loud as they were yesterday. <laughs> Thought I'd come in here for a second just to tell you what we're doing now. Uh, I have to do a whole bunch of rearranging of these pens because because of these surprise ewes and lambs, uh, they are going to screw up kind of the logistics of these pens. So I do need a bottle baby pen, uh, and I do want to keep these ewe lambs that are lambing for the first time, I want to keep them still separate from my mature ewes who have already started lambing. So I'm just going to do a whole bunch of rearranging, and you guys can just watch. Everything is clean and everybody's moved. So you lambs are right in here. Uh, this is the group that the accidentals will say that I kind of separated them from the mature use. Mature use are back there. So what I think I'm gonna do is, this is way too much space for just them. So I'm gonna put my bottle lambs um, in this first section here. I'm gonna actually kind of close it off right now just to keep it nice and fresh and keep this area really clean. What do you got? No, let me see. No. No. Okay, it is built. So this will be the future bottle baby pen. I will put the machine probably around here, and the nipples will be, I'll start them here, and build kind of a pen here, a pen there. Just depending on how many lambs I have, I build little pens inside this big pen. But I thought I'd just keep them out of here, keep this nice and clean, and ready for the new lambs.
figured I better bring Jess some lunch. She is working ground, some white bean ground. We're hoping to start planting next week, I think. So I'm her favorite person right now. Picking up dust, Jess. Picking up dust, Jess. No way you got taco. A1. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Do you want me to hold it while you turn? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have a little trick for all our um, meat now. And actually, I get Mark to cook a lot more now because uh, he's obsessed with the Bearded Butcher YouTube channel. And I bought him a whole set of like sauces and all these spices. We've gone through all the spices. They actually reached out to me and they must have, I think they saw a video. Maybe that, maybe Mark, because Mark wore his hat all winter. Anyways, they gave me a link to their stuff. And I'm telling you, their spices the are best. the best and their videos are so good. So check out the Bearded Butcher YouTube channel if like a lot of you probably already watch it, but they're amazing. So Bearded Butcher. I'll leave the link below because they gave that to me forever ago and I keep forgetting to tell you guys about it. But that's our little secret to make meat taste good. Lamb on the smoker with the Bearded Butcher stuff and hamburger and steak and all the things. Just it just takes it just takes it up a notch. Good morning you guys, it's Sunday. Yesterday I didn't vlog. It was my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. I have a couple pictures of them when they got married. And them now. But yeah, we had a Zoom, a Zoom call with some of their friends and some family last night and it was really quite nice. I know dad watches so happy anniversary and I hope it was a great day and a great evening with with your uh, with your Zoom friends, uh, I can't wait till lockdown is over. I we were supposed to be out by now. Today I am changing my feed sheet yet again. I change my feed sheet almost weekly, just depending what's going on. The other day, if you remember, I switched a bunch of pens around. And the other thing I did was uh, today I'm going to start my ewes that are going to be lambing here on June 13th or earlier. Uh, I'm going to switch them to their close-up ration. This is supposed to prevent preg talks. Um, I've been feeding it for over a year and it has not prevented it. So, uh, however, my feed guy says that uh, we don't know if it could have been worse. So I'm going with that theory. I'm feeding it yet again. It is not cheap. I struggle a little bit because I just had all these accidental babies and they've come out healthy. They've come out big. Mums, one mom went down with preg talk, so that might blow my theory, but for the most part, everybody looks good. So I don't know. If you're new to the channel, uh, over the summer you'll see us, meaning Mark, myself, and Jess, out in the fields quite a bit. And uh, we do run a grain farm separate from the sheep farm, but we also have some acres set aside specifically for the sheep. So we do grow all our own hay. We grow 50 acres, so 50 acres will do all 400 ewes, 30-ish rams. Uh, we feed some square bales to the finishing, the market lambs. So there's always, probably in a given year, there's probably about 700 lambs we're finishing over there. So we do grow the hay. We also grow corn silage and, and dry corn. So 
Um, I can't remember how many acres total. I'll ask Mark and hopefully put a caption here as to how many acres we set aside for corn. Depending on how much rain we get in a year of hay, we usually get three, if not four cuts. Last year was the first year we took four cuts. Um, and the spring, the hay's looked really, really good. If you've been with me at all over the last few years, you know that hay is a huge stressor for me. So I'm just staying inside for a bit, working on this feed sheet, and then I'll run out and visit Mark. Uh, our friend Jeremy, I was just, I was talking to him when he came to demo that air seeder last week or two weeks ago now. And I was telling him about hay, how hay season's coming up and I'm, I'm already getting anxiety over it and he's like do you want me to bring out a fence you guys can try it and that might make hay a little a little more interesting for you I'm like that would be great so uh so it showed up on Friday afternoon on our crappy wintry day what do you think pretty nice I was just riding with Mark for a bit, but I jumped off the tractor to get this pad all cleaned up and ready for uh, first cut hay, which we are going to chop it all, depending on how much is actually in this field is 50 acres. So if we have a little bit left over, we may just dry, we may just wait, dry the hay and make bales out of it. Uh, but I'm thinking there's probably just enough to do two really good full bags. We're actually gonna start, we're gonna snug up to this bag and go the other way. We're gonna go that way, we're gonna go north and uh, and then put the, put the second bag right beside it and that will leave us a third lane because we kind of need two spots. We need a, we need a lane for the, for the actual bagger and tractor and then we need kind of a lane beside it for the tractor and wagon to unload. Still kind of have my paint lines from last year. I've got a little yellow mark here so. Hopefully I can keep it between the lines, but that has yet to happen. So this haylage is gonna go through a big harvester. Ethan, our neighbor, is gonna come tomorrow, probably tomorrow afternoon. We're gonna merge these rows together to put two rows into one. He's got a pretty big machine, so he's gonna come tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it, it's a big self-propelled harvester and it just blows, it goes into the, basically into a header. It's very much like a combine, only um, it blows out into a forage wagon. And then what you'll get, because Ethan did it last year for us, this is fourth cut hay that I just opened here a couple weeks ago. Uh, so it will ensile in these plastic bags and it just makes for real nice fresh chopped feet, chopped hay. Uh, and that just helps with, if you bale it, uh, you do have some processing time in that mixer. That mixer is not great for big bales. Uh, we can put little chunks in at a time, but we can't put what we need to feed every day in that mixer. So we just kind of pre-process it with a harvester. So uh, a little more work at harvest time, like bales are a lot easier. It's just a lot easier to bale a field, pick up the bales. Um, but I think at the end of the day, this is just a really nice, the feed is really fresh and it just, it makes everyday feeding times a lot quicker. So I'd rather 365 uh, shorter feed days than, than a couple easier harvesting days. But remind me that I said that tomorrow and the next day when I'm complaining about how long this takes and how hot it is out here. There's Mark there. We are over half done that field. So he's going to do a few more rounds with the John Deere and then uh, he's going to hook up the fence and see how that runs in it. 
Uh, so far, he really likes the he really likes the transmission. He's like, that's a really nice tractor. So, anyway, we're just trying it out. We're really grateful that we have really nice people that let us borrow things. Your review of the Fent 512. Well, between Father's Day and my birthday coming up, uh, oh, it's a good present. Right, it sure is. Uh, I really like it. It's hard to compare completely because our John Deere is a quad transmission, so it's still kind of the older style transmission. Right. This is a CVT, which basically is kind of a infinite speed it's almost like a car uh, the way the transmission works you just give it more gas and it goes faster kind of thing uh, with the foot pedal mode you can do a whole bunch of other stuff it's kind of complicated but once you kind of get used to it it is very nice right what's your favorite thing so far uh my favorite thing is the transmission uh we've had these types of transmissions before but i think uh they're a lot better than they were in the past. Uh, Fent was one of the first ones to come out with one uh, to begin with, so they've had a lot of time to fine tune it. So theirs is really nice. Uh, the hand controls up here, even though they look complicated on the joystick, the uh, it's nice to have your two remotes here uh, because you kind of do your speed and everything all here. So I'm so used to a combine or a sprayer that's the same way that. Uh, for me it's very intuitive so I like that so uh, I'm very impressed I always kind of said I never wanted to drive a fence and I know <laughs> why now because I like think it. once you drive one you kind of like it yeah but all tractors have their perks but uh, very very impressed how do you think the hay is <laughs> the hay it's good, not as nice as the tractor, but... Uh, it's not as nice as the tractor, it's still hay. It's, still it's grassy. Hay. Uh, yeah, we kind of gave it, or uh, I guess I kind of gave it a little bit of a fancy fertilizer program this spring, which uh, 
we gave it sulfur, which I've done before, uh, but we also gave it some boron. Uh, alfalfa is like, it likes boron, but it can be, boron can be toxic to it, but I find our soils seem deficient? to be a little de deficient. So uh, I gave it just a little sniff of boron uh, and some potash and uh, some nitrogen and some, some sulfur. And it really helped the grass, I think. Uh, but I also think the alfalfa might be a little bit better. It doesn't have the yellow tips on the leaves, ah, uh, which is great. kind of indicative of boron deficiency. So I kind of feel like it was a good program. So I think this is the first year we've had this much grass. Yeah, sheep -like it's, grass. A, it's an older stand too. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, but I think overall, uh, it's probably a good first cut. What's your guess? How much? Two bags full? Yeah, I think it's going to be more than two bags. So we'll see. I said two bags. You say more than two bags. Yeah. We'll make her fit. problem with this being Sunday night means I, I lose Carissa for the week and this week's hay so I'm a little bit anxious. Um, the other reason is Carissa has come every night after supper to feed bottle babies because we just have a few we're supplementing and because I don't have the nanny up I don't usually put on the, the nanny meaning my uh, automatic automatic nurser I don't usually put her up until I have enough lambs to drink off it. Uh, so we just take a bottle and supplement any that we think need it. Um, I know of a few, but I'm not quite sure. So I have to text Carissa just to make sure I get them right. Okay, who wants a bottle? <laughs> okay, I got one of the triplets of Super Mom. Problem with these lambs is they're doing so well on Mom, all of them is that they don't like me so they run away and then I can't catch them to feed them so it's a bit of a race. You have to keep them on the bottle because eventually they might they just drink less and less off mom as she produces less milk and they grow and they need more so it's really important to always be able to keep that sucking reflex on another bottle even if they only drink 50 mils or 100 mils it's worth it later later down the road so they don't get nipple con confusion or nipple snobbery, they only want mum. You're not used to me, you're used to Carissa. It's like, mm. and it's done. But it drank uh, almost 200 mils, so definitely worth it. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Go see mum. Hey, Mom. Okay, I'm gonna feed some more. Mm -hmm.